following episode took me nine hours to record, not to mention editing and uploading. When I've got to make four episodes a day across three different channels, that's not really, that's not really conducive. So tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to shake things up a little bit. I'm going to shake things up. So I think the series is getting kind of overshadowed by the, by the, uh, you know, the, the restaurant, the hotel, the petting zoo. This was meant as a, a, an animal collectathon, getting all the biggest and best and coolest animals across many different mods. What it's ended up being is the world's slowest run mod series. So, uh, you know, today we're going to continue on at regular pace. And then after I'm done uploading this, I'm going to, I'm going to flip it on its head. We're going for a mid-season shuffle. Well, hello there, Rim Rims. Another vile, disgusting slug creatures watching this channel. <laughs> Thanks for watching, by the way. Welcome to Rim Rim World, where today, the zoo... I, I, I'll be honest, it's a bit of a logistics nightmare. We've, we've got a lot to try and sort out here. In between yesterday's episode and today, I've done a lot of working on things that are long overdue. Things like sorting out the stockpile. Things like renaming the animals, the colonists, things like that. Long story short, Patreon messages have been down. So I haven't been able to uh, rename a lot of the people, but we've all got names, hilarious names for everybody. And a couple of extra mods you guys won't be able to play along with because the Steam Workshop is just really, really fucking terrible. Just, <laughs> just unbelievably bad and a source of great stress for me on a daily basis. So like I was saying, the zoo is a logistics nightmare. We've got a lot of animals that are going in a lot of themed pens. We're going to have a Joris petting zoo. We're going to have a dinosaur park. We're going to have, you know, just all these kind of various themed areas. The problem with that is how the hell are we going to feed? Well, firstly, how the hell do we feed all the animals we've got already, right? They're all consistently starving to death and or savaging whatever the hell else wanders into the map. So... I've, I've added a couple of mods that really I should have added a long time ago and mods that I really should just add every series to be honest with you One of them is stack limiter which allows us to put a stack limit on um, Well stockpile so in this case the single refrigerator for the Joris petting zoo I put on a hundred kibble limit that way it'll be filled up on a daily basis with what we need But you know we want to make sure they don't starve to death. So I've thrown in the oh, I want to say it's called TD enhancements, but I might be wrong. TD enhancement pack, that's it, which has a lot of tiny little functions, but some of them work, work together with other mods. For example, it adds an urgent refill option. If you have a Lautal, which, I mean, of course you do, you're playing Rimworld, you wouldn't play without a Lautal, and this mod together, you can also tick urgent refill. So we can set a stat of, a, of 100 kibble for the animal feeding zones, and then we can say fill it up urgently. That way, every morning, they're going to wake up and go and feed all the animals in the zoo. And I thought that was quite a nice little addition there. So we can just put in these refrigerators, or like I said, for more dangerous animals, war refrigerators, and just have people urgently topping it up. I've renamed a few of the colonists, like I said. So we've got Katala, uh, Filthy Animal, which I thought was a very appropriate name for this series. Bear Arms. So Zia has been nicknamed Bear Arms. Uh, and the plan is, uh, given that I, I thought we were slowly sliding into the mad scientist side of things, given that the resources are now completely out of control, we will eventually be able to give Bear Arms big old prosthetic Arcotech arms for a bear. I would love to, as we go along here, start getting more and more animals in Biovats. The more we get into Biovats, of course, the faster the game will run. And a much more pleasant experience it will be for me to play. Because you guys probably didn't realize this, but... My god, these episodes take a long time to record. My poor PC has to deal with <laughs> hundreds of fucking animals running around. I've had some incredible name requests this time for for animals. I will admit, one of my Achilles heels is uh, ridiculous names for animals. So we've got, uh, for example, a giant dinosaur called uh, Jennifer Whiff Sniffler, which is very, very high tier. Bacon Bits Hammer, the, the pig. <laughs> and a giant storm cutter dragon called chicken nugget overall i mean it's it's this is going to attract guests in their drove this is going to be a very successful zoo the only thing i'm a little bit worried about is um is peter coming in because we haven't really got many defenses and our colony wealth now that we've kind of uncorked the foxes which is a fucking horrible expression yeah i mean it really has just descended to levels I mean, what are we up to? 388,000. It's not that bad, given that we're only really mining raw steel right now and turning that into, you know, kind of biovats that don't have a massive market value. So it's not it, it's not too out of control yet, but it's definitely out of control for the defenses we've got, which is to say a bunch of people wearing various kind of low-tier clothes, and most of them are melee characters. It's not ideal. What have we got the most of? Light leather. See that? I built it out of moth silk. <laughs> I feel like moth silk sandbags are not going to be particularly durable. Let's throw down some light leather sandbags then. How much we got? 251. Ideally, I'd like an entire row. Honestly, I was thinking stunning turrets. That way we could maybe recruit some more hands. We need dedicated waiters. We need dedicated wardens. We need dedicated entertainers. Somebody to run the gift shop. It's a complete mess. 
This is a nightmare. The stun turrets don't do damage, right? But the tasing turrets can... Yeah, this turret does a light damage. We'll try to down a target. That's fine if you're trying to take out like a big fucking dinosaur or even humans to some extent. But if you're trying to go for little tiny animals, obviously you're just going to kill them dead. So I think maybe we just go stunning turrets across the whole thing. And with enough stunning turrets, it'll be it'll be fine. You know, it'll do it. It'll do enough damage. And then maybe we'll throw down a couple of... Uh, we don't have spotlights. Well, not yet. We'll throw in a couple of spotlights too just so to... I don't, I mean, I was going to say maybe throw off the, uh, throw off the raids that we get, but bear in mind they're all using psychic powers. You don't have to aim psychic powers. That's not affected by sight. You just, you just kind of click and fire. Maybe for the AI, it is affected by their vision. I'm not entirely sure. If anybody knows, that'd be kind of handy to find out before, um, <laughs> before shit hits the fan. But to be honest, it probably won't matter too much given that they're going to be convulsing on the floor with a, a taser up their ass. So don't. Don't worry about it. So Marge is being... I built Marge a bedroom. I redid the throne room as well. Um, if that wasn't obvious, I just thought that was something that I should probably just do in between episodes because, like, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, really, isn't it? So I've reinstalled everything. Uh, Marge is also being a big bitch right now because she apparently has an undignified bedroom. She's got a, a royal end table rather than a regular end table, which is just not good enough for Marge. She needs some variety in her life, damn it. A whole new level of animal cruelty. Who are we going to throw in the big bioreactor then? We could throw in the big dragons. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. We could put Bert in. What about you? You look quite funny smashed up against the glass. First things first. I don't think we actually have any medicine. So let's, let's maybe grab some heal root. Oh, another one too. Hey, nice work. Fantastic. Oh, hello. A man hunts a pack of tar guzzlers. Holy shit. <laughs> we are hentai now. Really could do with some better guns, couldn't we? Really, really could do with some slightly better weaponry. Okay, um, well, let's bring you all down. The fox is in more or less the right place here. No, 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 don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. But he guzzles my tar. <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, it's horrible, the smell. The guests are going to be complaining. Oh, cold snap. We've got an achievement for that. Have a cold snap happen in the winter. Oh, shit, and we got a lot of outdoor animals. Well, to be fair, the only outdoor animals we've got right now are polar bears, who I'd assume. <laughs> I assume would be fine. I think that's a... Fairly, fairly safe guess. That's a, that's a two stars on TripAdvisor right there. I came here for the world-renowned fried lentils, and all I could smell was burning tar guzzler. <laughs> There's still another one, but I'm not sure we have to worry about it. Damn it, my drugs. Oh, now am I going to fun more animals? John is just, he's always on cloud nine. I've had him up working all night, anesthetizing animals and carrying them to bioreactors. This guy just cannot be stopped. 15, inspiration satisfied plus 10. I didn't even realize. Master of bigger stickers. So he's he's always got a permanent plus 25 mood. Oh no, hey, hang on. Plus 34 mood. And I assume his opinion of Marge is probably not gonna change. Same with his comfort, same with the fox. This guy is just he's unstoppable. He's always gonna be at the highest mood possible, I think. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a theory. You can't even see his head. <laughs> Minus 19 outdoors. I think the base should be decently warm. Minus 13. <laughs> Well, I take that back. I redid the workroom uh, and took away all the heaters where I was trying to trying to reorganize that in a way where we could have like these important workbenches with the... We do have the more linkables mod. We just haven't done enough research yet to uh, to unlock that or, well, anything really. I took away the workbenches because I was going to build start working at least today on our on our evil lab. So, we, well, not necessarily evil, morally questionable lab where we could start crossbreeding animals. Uh, I guess we could put it on the back of the giant biovat building, couldn't we? Maybe say no no guests allowed. Oh! Look at its creepy little hands. You're getting recruited for sure. We needed a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the bioreactors. I think they're I think they're great for the longevity of this campaign. Uh what I think is they're probably not great for the longevity of our people who are um apparently already dying of hypothermia. Unbelievable. Serious? Oh, if you're so serious about hypothermia, name everybody who's ever had frostbite. That's what I fucking thought. Oh, shit. Well, that's going to be an investigation. Oh, my God. What if we get shut down? What the hell is that? Hybrid Thumboro Genes Gene Trainer injects hybrid thrombo genes into a humanoid. The gene trainer gives the animal empath empathy ability, making the subject much more efficient when dealing with animals. Oh. Gene tailors are implants that do not take the place of any given organ. Only one can be installed at a time. Using a second gene trainer will have no effect and the gene trainer will be wasted. 
Just inject John with a dose of thrombo. I mean, he's already got a significant dose of cow. What about Martinius? He could do with that. Sure. Uh, can we get someone to hide the body? Marge, you want to get this body out of here before someone notices and gets us closed down? Okay. Thrombo genes, animal affinity. Look at that. Tame animal, train animal, gather speed and yield is up by 20%. Wow. And I wanted to use up Martinez because he's got 18.34 um, animal skill as well. So between him and John, they should be able to deal with all these animals pretty, pretty damn well. So this area at the back of the zoo is going to be um, <clears throat> guest disposal. Uh, guest emergency hospital ward. Um, I have set the Helixian slug that we've got to uh, to that area. So that, that will... In theory, deal with all of our corpses. I don't know where it's gone to. Ideally, we also want to hide it away because it gives everyone like a minus five mood because it's a, just a hideous, stinky slug. In the kitchen. Of course, it'd be in the kitchen. Shark tuber, the uh, hideous, stinky slug there, is in, <laughs> is in the one place where we definitely really don't want it to be. Yeah, minus five for 24 hours. I think it's because it's so cold right now. So we'll have to build all of the animals a barn then. Um... You know, we can deal with that pretty pretty fast, I think. If we just do something like this. And then, let's throw down. Oh, God. How do you use room all without Doc's world? Ugh. Turns out, building a frightening, brutalist genetic experimentation lab is kind of expensive. So I thought we've got one fox drilling, yes. But how about a second fox? Well, to be honest, the bigger issue is that we've got, you know... <laughs> no advanced multi-analyzer, no scientist cabinets, no Arcotech projects, no mutagen centrifuging. You know, none of the stuff we actually need to build the horrific genetics lab. But we'll focus on a good research room first. Then we'll go crazy genetics lab afterwards. Or we'll, we'll start small. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that to zoom out there to get a real scope of how small we're starting? That's where all our bloody steel went. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it'll help out with the raids that we've undoubtedly got coming up that are going to be probably quite tough now. Maybe we also go for an expansion on this then by extent. Because those raids are going to hit fucking hard. And you know what? Maybe it wouldn't also hurt to uh, throw down a few more quote-unquote kill zones on the edges of the other areas that people can get into. We've got like a, like a geothermal generator potential around here. Yeah, we do. Oh, they're a lot easier to find now that we've got the enhancement pack back on. I don't think I ever talked about why I removed it, because it's like really, really good. But the, the reason I took it out is it doesn't have an impact on uh, TPS, but it can have a pretty significant impact on FPS, because uh, it draws a lot of overlays, depending on what you're looking at, especially say something like the uh, terrain affordability map, which will actively draw like an insane amount of, of overlays onto the map. Uh, by which I mean, of course, I know nothing about RimWorld. Haha. <laughs> Shit, my cover's blown. I basically removed it for other people's benefits, but I'm going to say it. Flip other people. I don't flipping care anymore. Outstanding. What a what a fancy achievement. And in fact, that animal transport pod brings me on to uh, very nicely ties those two points together. Not only did we get an achievement there. What's it got? Razor Jack called Verona. Okay, we haven't got a Razor Jack, so I'll happily take that. Carry it to a bioreactor. Fuck it. It's mine now. What I was about to say is we've got plenty of achievement points and we can drop on in animals. Why not embrace the Joris experience and spend 475 points on 19 Joris drop pods? Is that 19? 25 times 20 minus 1. I'll get back to you on that one. Now, we could drop all 19 Joruses simultaneously, but I feel like as fun as that would be, as fun as that would be, probably a horrible idea. And yes, I do have the cheater cheater achievement there. Uh, first, it's 75 points. So obviously I'm going to take that. Um, but it's because I draw out a green screen for my thumbnails and now I'm being punished for it. So in the future, you don't get any, you don't get any nice thumbnails. You just get a screenshot of what's going on. There you go. You get thick crate dragon ass. <laughs> send, me a, send me a Joris. Just straight up send me a Joris. It's a Joramir. Get it. Give me that right now. John. John, stop fucking around. Gathering around the whole inventory. Couldn't give a shit. Get Joramir. Any new Joris is good news to... M hmm. Those shadows look mighty suspicious, don't they? <laughs> John? Gonna have to speed this up, pal. Oh! The speed of him being savaged by bloody Joramir. Joramir, fuck off. What are you doing slapping him with 78 fish simultaneously? Oh, God. <laughs> well, this is a comedy of errors. Oh! Fucking Pikeman killed... Ah, oh, well... 
Never mind, these things happen, don't they? So we're going to take all of these guys, given that the majority of our colonists, quote-unquote, either don't have arms or are brawlers, which is very annoying. And then we're going to take the four people actually capable of using bloody guns in this colony. We're going to hide them somewhere and let the foxes deal with it, probably, to be honest with you. <laughs> which is a coward's way out. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm playing the, playing the hand I've been dealt here, which is fucking brawlers. Brawlers and sentient bears. It's more genetic material for any potential crossbreeding in the future, so I'm all right with that. You all right there? Mathanius is... Oh. oh, if there was a word for the emotion I felt right now. This transcends anger. It's a real fucking game of moment. It's a real fucking game of moment. My wooden stop pile is on fire. There's a nuclear reactor in the room adjacent. I'll be honest with you. Mathanius, you're going to fucking burn. You will burn for this. Mawalius. To kick the chem fuel in the one area that I hadn't floored over because I moved the whole base around. <sighs> of course. Of course they would. Of course they would. Rip it up! Rip up this wooden floor! We're good. We're good. We lost every single B. But we're good other than that. This is fine. Hit a nice cozy 92C. How much silver we got? Uh, sorry, steel. We got no steel. We got uranium. Right, time for some uranium floors. <laughs> oh. Oh, we can use... Asphalt? I mean, I suppose. We turn the chem fuels into the stockpile. Oh, but it's minus cleanliness. I mean, I don't really care about that. Can't beat chem fuel. Join chem fuel. Become chem fuel. Animal needs rescue. Has a life threatening malnutrition. Uh, eat a meal. Oh, it's not difficult. I mean, Grant said I've trapped them inside this greenhouse. To be honest, I might just keep them trapped here forever. If we just grow some lentils and some fucking hay grass or whatever, they'll be they'll be fine here. Done a little bit more tidying up, a little bit more anesthetizing of animals that we don't want wandering around. Look, if you're upset that these animals aren't free roaming, let me remind you, I said this was going to be an animal museum, not a zoo. Except for yesterday, where I caught it a zoo like three times, but it's an animal museum, okay? It's the one where we display animals. We're not here for the... They're not here to wander around and have a nice life. So I've queued up the research lab, or at least part of the research lab anyway. Oh, what is that thing? Quillen. What's that from? Oh, Magical Menagerie. Oh, that's cool. Okay, definitely want one of those for my... <laughs> for my bioreactors. We're not really getting much else new other than that, though, unfortunately. A few dinosaurs spawning at the edges every now and again, but... It's very rare that we get... Well, anything rare, to be honest. Guess that means that the next plan of action, then, if the game isn't going to send us anything rare, is to make our own rare creatures. So when we've got the... I think minimum we want the advanced multi analyzer, but ideally when we've got the scientist cabinet too for optimal research. Oh, yeah, but whatever. But when we've got that ready for optimal research, that's when we'll start going into a bit more genetic room, I think. Let's go ahead and crack out some Joruses. Let's spawn a few more in, see if this time we get a bit more lucky, and hopefully they won't be Im <laughs> immediately savage. Sponge Joris Square Bonson. We don't have a Sponge Joris Square Bonson. And we'll fall asleep soon. You. Shit. I never thought this day would come. We've actually gotten a fresh new recruit. A, 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 a Royo. Or as they were called, a Royo. I had the perfect name for this character. The vengeful, world-weary, heat-inclined shooting expert had to be Rambo himself. And my favorite Sylvester Stallone film is... Jurassic Park. So that is actually a really nice coincidence. The only problem is now we've got to build more bedrooms because I don't have enough for, well, I mean, Rambo and a giant Stegosaurus, a bear, a Mothman, and everybody else. Uh, I got Black Eye of Attack. Holy shit. <laughs> well, we knew it was bound to happen sooner or later. You can't just drill every resource in the game without there being some consequence. Oh, we've just peaked over 400,000. Look at that. Very slightly just peeked over. We really, really could do with some better guns. On the plus side, we've got somebody who's actually capable of using a gun. So I suppose minor round of applause for uh, Cassandra there for sending us something to defend ourselves with. Go grab that semi also. Let's get you guys hanging around. Just get you guys hanging around, hey? And then foxes. Jesus, they're fast. Oh, dear. Um. Well, this is going to be something. Yeah, yeah, come over here. Come over here. That's it. Okay, no, I need to get a little bit closer than that. Well, this is actually kind of insane thank you it's genuinely like clockwork 
in that every single time we try and tame ourselves a new a new Joris, we get some sort of horrible invasion. I mean, this is just this is just thoroughly horrible. This is just thoroughly, absolutely horrible. I'm just trying to keep them juggled to the extent that we can we can keep them on fire without having to worry about them shooting back because the Black Hive do have a projectile attack. And I'm worried that if it stacks up too much on our foxes, it might do a bit too much damage. So by trying to keep a little bit of damage on all of them fairly equally, we're keeping them decently under control here. Oh, I can't believe this is fucking working. This is like exceptionally sweaty, Rimwald. This, I would argue, is Rimwald that's like too sweaty. This, this transcends Rimwald. And through the magic of abusing game mechanics and the hyper overpowered fox, we are once again safe for another day. <laughs> now, John, it's time to get back to business. Time to get savaged by a comical polar bear. Oh, God. Oh, God. 17% chance. Okay, okay. This, this one, this one, this one will work. Things have, things have gone downhill. Things have gone downhill. Just, just bear with them. Things are, things are not going well at all. Alone? Oh, because John's the only cow man here. Oh. John's at half mood, and I very much did say, like, 20 minutes ago that John would never fall below the highest mood, so, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Martinius is pissed, Burger is pissed, Filthy Animal is pissed, Rambo is catatonic, which is arguably so pissed that you stop being pissed, full circle. Marge, so pissed that she's given us a wild decree to build a monument of ridiculous proportions. Uh, Katala, pissed, psychotic wandering, because apparently she's recreation starved, despite the fact that we have... No recreation in the base. Slight oversight. That's not true. We do have a darts board. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've had a lot to build, okay? Fuck off. Bert, though. Bert? He's, he's alright. He's happy with life. He's very happy with life. Bear Arms is sad because he's naked. Which, to be fair, actually, I was about to say, you know, obviously we can't make him clothes. But we, we actually really can. Animal clothes right there. Wearable by... Bears, 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 alpacas, cougars, foxes, lynx, mega sloth, mega scarab, mega spider, panther, spellipede, squirrel, thrombo, wog. It's very much a one size fits all situation uh, from thrombo to squirrel, but apparently bear was lost along the way. Animal gear, animal something, okay. Animal howder, um, current weather brought by elephant, I'd assume it's br bridle, thrombo, fine. Um, and that's about it. I can make a tail. I don't know how that attaches to a person. Oh, I do know. I'm not going to pretend. I know. <sighs> All this shit's going on and the bear's complaining because he's naked. You're a fucking bear. The bear can wear the clothes. Or not. <laughs> well, it's got it on. Is it kind of stop being naked anymore? What do I feel weird out and about? Oh, clothes. I mean, you, you are wearing clothes and you're covered in fur, so I don't really see the problem. Come on, John. I need this victory. 8.1% chance. Jesus. Right, let's get these corpses moved next. I need to move the corpses so I can build more bedrooms so that we can tame more friggin' bear people to then complain at me for not having fucking clothes. We can bulldoze this and replace it with recreation. Because apparently a chess table and a, 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 a naffle taffle table isn't enough. This is like one of the most stressful series we've ever had. There's so much to fucking juggle. Not to mention, very inconvenient pirates have set up a psychic suppressor nearby. That I really can't do much about right now. Production. Give me a crematorium made of the finest marble. No, steel. We've got two fucking fox people. Mining steel basically around the clock. And even that is not enough to fulfill the needs of this colony. It's just an absurd situation we find ourselves in. No. It was too much. The pressure of a mountain of corpses in their garden was too much, which is fairly, <laughs> fairly reasonable as far as complaints go. <laughs> John asked Marge for a break. John and Marge are no longer in a relationship, but John will change his now name back to his birth name. Wait, I thought Marge. Marge definitely took John's name because her name was not Marge Herman. John Zavala. That wasn't your fucking name, you liar. <laughs> What? I've never had that happen before. He was a prepared, carefully character. We made him and called him John Herman. Marge has stolen his name. And John has had to get a whole new name. Wow, maybe that's just what happens when you're uh, when you're royalty, huh? 
She can she will keep her royal name. She is the Herman now. Wow. That's a hell of a divorce proceeding. She cares to keep the family name. <laughs> yeah, the guests aren't happy. Score 11. It's because I'm not entertaining them anymore. I really just do not give a fuck because we've got way too much to manage and they can uh, they can wait. The park is open for business. They can go fuck around with the Jarvis's, whatever. That's all they get to do. Bert has broken down and in his tantrum is doing exactly the thing that I kind of would want him to do anyway, except he's doing it better than he normally would do. <laughs> Tame that fucking bay at John! What the fuck are you doing? It's been days! Consuming simple meal. Milking bacon droid. Here's an idea. Stop milking bacon droid and start taming sponge jars. What is that? That's handle, isn't it? Let's make a handle tier two. Maybe there's just so much animal stuff to do that he can't have time for anything else. You know, maybe we've got to the point now where... Psychic expression, of course, is now helping. Maybe we've got to the point now where Martinius is actually better. Menagerus gives times 120%, but Martinius gets plus 20%. I'll be honest with you. It's currently 3 a.m. I cannot work out which one of those is better off the top of my head. And honestly, it doesn't matter. It's a sponge in the shape of a bear. Or is it bear in the shape of a sponge? 8.1% chance. We're going to have to go deal with those fucking pirates. And I haven't got any way to deal with them. Well, we do. We've got magic foxes. Oh, I take it back. Martinius has got the killing. Hey, look at that. Just an incredible design. Really nice to look at. Mythical creature. Perfect for the zoo. I'm going to anesthetize it, and I'm going to throw it right into the bio vat. Oh, my God. The pirates are wearing animal hats. <laughs> well, I, for one, absolutely can't believe that we won that. That's, um, that's incredible. Who would have guessed that the artillery foxes would have systematically dismantled yet another raid? <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange playthrough. This is a real strange... Did we not already get the complete... Hmm... <laughs> Kill a hundred human likes in total. Did I? Guess it's just uh just checked after we took out the pirate base. That means we've got 445 achievement points to spend. I'm very, very, very tempted to spawn in a man in black with our achievement points. Because our colonists, they're all pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> they're all pretty bad. And the majority of raids we get in this series are from environmental things, mechanoids, insects, that type of thing, manhunter packs, and not well, people. Oh, oh, wow, wow. Would you look at the time? Is it 4 a.m. already? I better better get going. <laughs> I think that's enough of room for one fucking day. Okay. Um. Right. Okay. Well, well, la, 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 la. We have just finished all the research for multi analyzers, scientists, cabinets. Everything we needed is now ticked off. Sure, we haven't built it yet. That's not a big deal. It does open things up to building say, pulse charge munitions, or EMPs, or whatever it might be that we need to defend ourselves somehow. I mean, a new save would probably <laughs> probably be a big... Oh, shit. Should we just go all in bionics? Fuck it. Fuck it. I hate this game. I'm sick of sitting around for 40 minutes, real life, trying to tame a single friggin' shitty polar bear. Did they tame it? I didn't even realize. Wait, wildlife? Oh, did it die? Animals, Sponge, Joris, Square, Bonson. Did it die? Did we tame it? And I didn't even notice. That's what I was waiting for and they've done it. Well, there's no wonder I didn't fucking see it. Why are you all the way over there? <laughs> right, go to the Jorisu. It literally went and hid in, the, in like the, the furthest corner of the map possible. Now, time is really of the essence here because this is a fire ship. Uh, the way fire ships work is... See if you can work it out. Yeah, I'm not going to explain that one. It means that we're going to have to act fast, like very, very fast. I've got another drill set up on Plasteel as well. So we've got this one here for Plasteel, this one for gold, this one for for steel. Means we're installing though, because they've apparently just finished yet another pile there, Marge. If you could deal with that one for me. We've got another one like up here somewhere. Yeah, see, we've got plenty of steel now, like a ridiculous amount of steel, to the extent that I might actually go as far to reinstall these, forbid them temporarily, and get them on the Plasteel instead. Because that's our limiting factor right now. We've got so much steel just kind of lying around, you know? And I mean, look, props to Rocket Man here. We've got uh, an insane amount of animals tamed. Like a ridiculous amount of animals tamed. Most of which are still free range. We've got the mechanoid fuck corner over there. Destination me. Uh, and this many colonists. Ten colonists. And guests. And, and the whole lot. And it's still running actually kind of well. If you're curious, uh, Bacon Bits Hammer. 
Can't move. Lost every single hoof. Both ears and a nose to frostbite. So it can't hear anything and it can't move. It's just got to kind of lie there. Being walked over all day by dragons. And dinosaurs. And, you know, creatures of the void. <laughs> Giant Star Wars dinosaurs. <laughs> It's a horrible existence. So Martinius is our best driller. Marge is okay at drilling, actually. What's Marge doing right now? Because there's nothing to build. Sewing. Is she good at plants? So she's one of our best plants workers, so I can't... Oh, actually, she's not that good. Oh, shit. Look, let's give Burger a higher plants priority. Then let's move... No, 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 because we need cooking to come first. But I always need butchering to come first, otherwise the animal starts to death. This is what I'm talking about. Like, our, our, our skill set is... is pretty terrible given that we've got 10 colonists seven of them are animals one of which has no fucking arms the rest of them are pretty garbage it's a it's a bad it's a bad time uh let's take well i need to put someone else on drilling it has to be someone thing is if we stop martinius drilling then we can't keep all the animals trained simultaneously which means we have to build more biobats if we're building more biobats we can't build things to beat the mechanoids so here's the thing then i think we take marge we take marge we put you on Eventually, we can get rid of the, the corn. We don't need to grow any more psychoid. Fuck the psychoid. Let's get rid of that. We need to keep the corn going for now. When we've got this built, we can have rice and lentils. That means we've got everything for lavish meals, everything for kibble. Because kibble, you need a combination of both. Then we don't have to worry about running these farms anymore. And chances are, we could probably get rid of this as well. We are, we are trying to tackle a lot of problems simultaneously. But when we've got it done, like, it's it's good, right? We're, we're fine. Marge, get on the drill. Big Marge, big drill. Okay, uh, Marge, I'm not really giving you a fucking choice, actually, pal. All right. Uh, let's get the magic. Okay, I'm going to force the magic box to go on this, uh, on this draw then. Thank you, Monsoon. <laughs> that couldn't have been any better timing. Well, that'll keep the fire ship under control temporarily. Now, the way it works is because, of course, the, the ships will have... See, we can't even train the animals. We've got this ridiculous. Uh, because of the way ships in Rimworld work, obviously, they have the expanding radius. Eventually, the fire, the, the fire when the monsoon goes, will restart back out to, to where it is. As far as I recall, if this just kills it dead, that would be incredible, but obviously, that'd be very silly because then any rain would just make this fairly redundant. So, I, I think, uh, from what I remember the way it was anyway, is that the, uh, the fires will set beyond its uh, furthest burnable radius point. That's a job for tomorrow because I've been recording this since 8 p.m. It's now 4 in the morning. Uh, that's enough. That's enough for a mod. I'm done here. Thank you. I, I wouldn't... I'm going to be completely honest with you right now. I'm going to be completely candid. I wouldn't have done this series if I'd have known how much this was going to take to record on a daily basis. <laughs> Fuck it. I'd have gone with some of the other ones. We got so many series ideas, and I was like, oh, we'll build a fucking animal museum, forgetting that Rimworld, when you have more than two animals, runs like me. Thank you to Balman, Alex, Coolio, McCool, Cool, This Be Willis, Hoofenspiel, Kate, Knight, Ex Dr. Don, MD, Venator Sparrow, Dunker, Lores Quail, Mr. Moosh, Virgo of Doom, Aromatic Fool, and TG Taps for their support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. New Patreon lists will be available starting tomorrow. So if you're not on the end list and you're thinking, boy, I should be on the end list, or if you've signed up within the past two days, perhaps, uh, Patreon are currently doing their whole crap that they do behind the scenes. Um, I call it crap. It does pay my rent, so probably shouldn't be so dismissive. Thank you to Sandy, Asaro, Holdemord, Squid Eater, McGruff, Heck, Lazy Panda, Spirelli, Kickstart, Sheng Damast, Yeeticus, Shizzledur, Sparky Fan 1, Hey, I'm Alex, Frobear, and Plumby as well. What a mistake this series was.